Hi friends, Rye Myers here, your Broadway and Entertainment BFF, and thanks for watching another episode of Live with Rye. Okay, I have a big show for you today, and I'm so excited for today's guest, but before we get to today's guest, as always, listen, do me a big favor, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Live with Rye, and you can see my weekly Broadway talk show, which happens in person, and also streams here, and all of my other content, and if you're watching on Facebook, give a thumbs up or a love to show that you're watching, and hey, listen, I love being able to bring this show to you week after week, but it's people like you who make it possible. So if you are so inclined, you'll see at the bottom of my screen, my Venmo handle at Rye underscore Myers. Go ahead and leave a don donation of any amount. I would so appreciate it. Now let's get on with today's show. I am so excited to welcome my fabulous guest. As he says on his show, please help me welcome the one, the only David Yontif. <laughs> Hello. Listen, it's all about those coins, baby, right? Make those donations, people. Yes, 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 I yes. I mean, come on. Right. It's you Sunday know. morning. We're here, you know? You know that. I was going to say, did I do I did I do David Yontif justice with the one, the only? The one, the only. Yes. That just kind of became a thing. It never was planned out. And I was doing some introductions like that for guests and some not. And then I just started doing it. And it's really weird because, like, some of these people are huge, you know, and it's like, you just look at their faces and they all get it. And then even when people are not that big, you still do it. And they're just like, oh, wow. Like, just, I don't know. It just became a thing. I think it makes people feel like, wow. Okay. Oh yeah. It makes people feel so, so special. And, and everybody that comes on is special, but it does. It makes it a, you know. <laughs> and it's like, look, I mean, it really like my podcast has become a total business for me. And so it's like, it's not like I like everyone that necessarily right. comes on. It's my job. But to me, it's like, it's your hour. And so, you know, look, it's a job. There are days I'm not in the mood. There are days I'm so busy, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's your hour. And I owe it to you to treat you as if you are my favorite interview ever of all time. Right. Like it's not about me. And so it's rude otherwise, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, and you do a hell of a job with it. I mean, really, you make everyone feel at home. I listen, as you know, I'm an avid listener. In fact, I just got finished listening. I was in the shower listening to your latest with Kim D uh, from this, the recap of this week. Uh, you know, I love, love a good Kim D episode and uh, was listening to you one with Margaret Josephs and you and Sarah. So, I mean, I'm an avid listener and you really, you really do a wonderful job. So. I love it. And even the Kim D thing, like on the Patreon, like that's just a thing. Like I've known her forever. It was never really planned. It was never like, it just look, you know, when they say like, you know, life happens when you're busy making plans. It's true. Like, look, there's a lot of things that are thought out and like my podcast just didn't happen to be a success. Like there are very calculated moves and work, but the thing with sure. Kim D, I didn't think it would be every week that she would be here. It just kind of happened. And here she is. Yes. Yeah. I rem that is, that is pretty amazing. I, and, and I remember you saying, yeah, you were shocked that she came week after week. So it's wonderful that, uh, you know, she did, she seems like a wonderful, she seems like a cool person, you know? So I am shocked that she, listen, Kim is, and I say this to her face because we're friends. Yeah. She is flaky, not flaky. Yeah. Like I'm blowing you off for something better, but flaky. Like I'm not in the mood to do this now. Or like Kim's one of those, like, you know, if you're out having a drink with someone, and it's like, oh, my God, like, wait, we're going to go to Florida next month. Oh, my God, we should go to Italy. Wait, we should start doing a different restaurant. Ever. So when Kim is out, she we make these plans. And I just know after being friends with her for many years that, you know, like 49 percent of the plans that are made, it has nothing to do with drinking. Just they either happen or they don't happen because she just stays home. So I was like when she committed to this, I was like. I don't really want to tell people this is every week of New Jersey Housewives that Kim D is going to be doing recaps because I'm not sure she's really going to stay with us every week. Yeah. But somewhere throughout it, she was like, I made a commitment. And I'm like, and here we are. So, And it's become like literally one of the most, it's everyone's favorite. I don't know how yeah. this happened. I mean, it's wonderful. I, I, I think it's great. Personally, I, I love her. But I, do you think she's doing it to get back on the show? I mean, look, I really do don't like I think she I mean I think look I think some stuff has happened during it like I think she really just started doing it because why not and I asked her I don't really think she thought it was going to be every week either and then <laughs> it, I think the fact that it really organically has gotten traction right. and the listenership has started going up 
And she tells me, oh, my God, my followers have gone up. I mean, she's writing a book. And like, so I think she started to see, which is great. That's power of behind the velvet rope. Like, <laughs> she's getting benefits from being on it just in terms of like followers and her book. Her look, do I think that there is this chatter now? I mean, look, do I think she's going to be back on the show? I don't really think that's the direction Bravo is going to go. Yeah. But I think that it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt because, I mean, we also have a YouTube channel. I put the clips up. Right. So I think people watch these things. You know, like, look, people at Bravo could pretend they don't watch these things all day, but they do. And so I just think that she isn't really doing it for that. But I think it is starting to be in the back of her mind. Who knows what this could lead to? But I believe that about everything in life. I believe right. every conversation leads to something, right? True. Very, very true. And and who knows? I don't, you know, that's a really good point. So on the topic of Velvet Rope, how did the Velvet Rope pod, how did Behind the Velvet Rope podcast come about? I mean, I have had so many different careers and I have reinvented <laughs> have. myself successfully yes. in careers. And that's not said with any ego because I'm like, God, my personally, I'm a mess. But I'm not like a mess, but just things, you know, but like I was a lawyer and then I was in HR. So it's like, I really it was at a point where I was hanging out with like all these people on reality TV. And just look at, we live in New York City, right? So it is right. easier. There are people. So it just, it, it happened. And then it really kind of was Margaret that would always say to me things like, you know, what are you doing? Like, because I really was in between careers. And she's like, you got to think of like, you're, you're with us all the time. Like, you got to do something with your life. Like, couldn't this be a business? And look, I, for months and months, you know, was like, I don't know how this could be. a. I don't get it. Like, how can I make this a business? But I realized, I mean, well, I recognize like when I would post a picture with like a Margaret or something, they'd be like, oh my God, how do you know Margaret? How do you know Kim? And I'd be like, oh, you know, it's kind of like, I always say this, like if you're a child of a celebrity, you, at some point you realize your life is different, right? Like, but you don't really for a long time. I mean, it's your, like when something is your truth, it's not really so unique to you. You can step out of yourself. And I think I have just that skill. So I was like, well, if I step out of myself, like maybe these things are not normal. Like, oh, I'm sleeping at Margaret's tonight. I'm doing this. And I'm like, maybe these stories. So it really started with stories. It started like two days a week, one day an interview. And the other day was like supposed to be like a Wendy Williams. Like mm -hmm. we can go out and have a drink but I am going to talk about you tomorrow morning. So just <laughs> be, and listen, as the podcast started getting bigger, all of that became easier. Like right. there was a lot of like, I don't know, like I don't want to be cut off at the knees if I'm talking about this because the show is like small. And then as it got bigger, it was more like, no, I'm just going to do this. Like if you don't like it, then we could just not hang out. Like there was this transition, but it really started like that. And then it just morphed into COVID happened. And I was home and I overshot interviews. I reached out to so many people and they all were saying yes. And I was like, I'm sitting here with like 50 recorded interviews. I don't know what to do with them. And then we went to three days a week and four. And it just morphed into like a five day a week interview show. And I still have these stories. I do like one day a week. and right. But it's really less about me. And it really, so it really, it's a different skill set. It really is like I trained myself in like journalism. And it's really like, it's not about me. Listen, having a legal background does help. Like, of course. I mean, look, we can do a dance for an hour, but if I need you backed against that wall and I need to get some tea, yeah, I'm slowly leading you to a series of questions where <laughs> here we are, and these are now coming at you, and I need answers for the listeners. And yes. That's, so it really is like this build up, and so it just became this interview show. Wow. It just kind of happened. I mean, that is truly truly incredible talk about like finding your passion and actually doing something with it and it sounds like you have found your true calling you've done all of these other careers it found it sounds like david yontif has truly found what he's meant to do and you use all of your expertise in it i mean even as a legal background i mean you you're ready to question people on the spot but also it helps too when you know people try to come after you because you've had your fair share of you know housewives and people you know try to come at you and you use you're very very smart so I think that it's incredible that you've taken this and run with it and created your your own thing from it. And I have to say, shout out to Margaret Joseph. She's 
my one of my all-time favorite housewives. I adore her. She's supposed to be on the show in a few weeks. And um, I was at her book signing and I've met Marge Sr. and Lexi a few times. They're all wonderful people. Um, I can attest to that as well. I know you hear it from David, but as a lay person, that is very, very true. She's one of the kindest people. So it's true. <laughs> yeah. It is true. And so yeah. And so like, look, it helped that I knew certain people that I was friends with anyway, that I got them to come on the show, but it's really now turned into a whole thing. So yeah. I, this is really what I'm meant to do in it life. Is. You know, I mean, it's a lot of work and of course, you know, and look, I mean, so it's just become like a business and it's just, it, everything ranges the gamut from like your friend, Margaret Josephs is coming on the show to like, here's someone that's coming with agents and managers and networks and, 15,000 people are on the right. Zoom listening. People right. are right there. You might not know it. Yes. And here's a list of questions I can't. It's, it, listen, that's it, it. Those are maybe the rare exceptions, but there are. There's always like, this person won't do it. Okay, maybe they'll do it, but here's what you can't bring up. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm really one. There's one or two times or three times maybe where I'm like, I'm not interested. No, thanks. Mm -hmm. But normally, like, I think it's, again, because I'm a lawyer, like, I can, when I have an agenda, like, if you're coming on my show, and people want to hear about something, I can figure out a way to get it in the question without asking it, or like asking something else. And then to me, it's like, you brought up like Janice Dickinson, who sued Bill Cosby, and that was the one, you brought the name Bill Cosby up. So right. when someone brings something up, now it's like i didn't bring this up so right. i'm now gonna go there things, exactly things like that that's just one example i could think of but there's a lot of others where or, uh, yeah or jill zarin i mean that you know that that infamous thing you you know she brought it up and you just happened to you know met say housewives and she brought it up i think that's so that's also just the art of the interview and it's just the art of the technique that you have that you can you know, if you can't go in the front doors, they say go around the back or the side. And, you know, if you know how to master that, which you clearly do, it makes for such great interviews. And it's funny you talk about, you know, having the, you know, the publicists, the agents, all that on the call. I was going to ask, I'm curious, you know, have have you found out now that you sort of have open access to these people? And when you first began, was it very, was there a lot of gatekeepers? You know, one of the things that for those who are in sort of the media interviewing world, do you get a lot of gatekeepers, a lot of these you know, if, unless you know the Margaret Josephs or the Dolores is, you know, one on one, if you go through their people a lot of times and not just for housewives, but for anyone, you go through the people, a lot of it's like, well, what's your viewership? Oh, I don't know if they're interested, but the person might be interested. So are you seeing now that you've exploded that now it's a little bit more open doors? And when you first started, maybe they were saying like, no, they're not interested or what is this? Yes. And no, in a way, like it's when I first started. Mm -hmm. It's almost like there was a brief window of, you know how like they say, like, just appreciate those beginning states. It's like there was a brief window of like what I didn't know actually helped because I would just reach out to you and DM you and like, hey, girl, you want to talk yeah. whether you're a house. And so like the lack of really being big or known at some points, I think, worked to my advantage because like I didn't realize like, oh, wait, like you have like a team I'm supposed to involve. And I would just reach out and a lot of people would then involve their team, but a lot of people would just say yes. Yeah. And I truly believe that when you are a small podcast, you have a, a, look, it's not to the extent now, like it's great now and I wouldn't take it, but you do have a group of people, I think that will come on. It's not that they feel sorry for you, but it's like, they're like, well, why not? Like, no one's listening, really. Like, it's an easy interview. You know, I'll get one new, you know, some one person will buy my book. I think there's this window of, like, well, no one's really going to listen. And so, like, then, and their guard is down because they're, like, they're not going to get national media coverage. And so, in the beginning stages, there was this weird, like, what I didn't know, actually, like, I'm, like, I can't believe I would just DM these people. Right. You know what I mean? Because I didn't, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, so you get those and then they talk. Then, right, after that brief window, it it's easier now, of course, because now it's like, well, like, why is this Beverly Hills? Oh, well, wait, Sutton Strack has been on three times and Crystal Kong has been on. And like, so it's like it is it's all about viewership and all that. But it's also like a name game of like, yeah. the bigger the name. 
of like, wait, you had Countess Luann and you had like Margaret and like, oh, well, I mean, Countess Luann's a bigger housewife than I am. So I guess if she's, it's like, there is that. Right. There is that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's easier now, but also I think that the level has been stepped up that yes. there are still people. I mean, there's a people, people are involved, you know, like. Exactly. And listen, a lot of people will reach out to me. Like, That's I crazy. have stories of like, just strange stories of like, somebody DM'd me on Instagram. It's just one story. And it's like, there's no picture. I think this person had like 200 followers. Like, hey, you know, do you want to have Black China on your podcast? I'm her publicist. And, right. It's like, you know, listen, I'm like, I didn't, I, I respond to everything. I'm like, you know, yeah, sure. And I'm like, well, whatever. Like, right. Like, bullshit. Yeah. Um, I mean, because this was before the, I mean, this was during the lawsuit, not the trial that just happened, but the suit was already filed and in motion. I'm like, she's not going to talk to her. So I was like, listen, can you just email me? The person emailed me. And of course it was from like a Gmail. I'm like, this doesn't help me. This is like, yeah. ABC. but I went and then the more we went back and forth, I'm like, wait, this seems like it might really be real, you know? And then, yeah. and I never believe someone's going to show up even now i just think like people forget and they're like 99 oh, of the people do show up but i just yeah. don't expect it and so then it was like she was scheduled and it was like and i was like oh my god so i, I do have people that are and i have publicists pitch people all the time to me but so you have that but it, it's so it's it's easier now but there are still like people involved yes that's very that's long. That's long winded, David. That is long. No. Oh, please be long winded. Please. We love a, we love a, as Kathy Hilton says, long winded. We love a Dorit long winded answer. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm long winded as well. And I think I thought that answered it perfectly. And I think it's interesting too, because you never, I mean, the person goes on a podcast or a interview show that maybe doesn't have as many views and then they say something and it gets picked up and then, you know, they don't, they don't realize it or they, you know, so it's, it's a very, it's very interesting. And I find it to be, um, and I found your response to be very interesting because, you know, when you deal with these gatekeepers or this publicist or the people themselves, it's tougher than, as you say, I send a lot of DMs as well. And when you send the DMs, they're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, and usually what I have found, and this is sort of a general note to people out there too, who may have an interview show, the person is usually more interested than the team. So if you talk to somebody and they're interested, make sure you also, when you, if they have to get their team involved or if they're like, Oh, you know, I can't do anything without my, you know, going through my agent or publicist, make sure you stress that they're interested and you've spoken to them. So you have some sort of receipts that. <laughs> Keep the receipts a hundred percent. I agree with that. And I agree with it to another level too, is like, I've had these like, don't ask this and don't ask that. Not, not the most, you know, that doesn't happen often, but when it right. does, I find like the person gets on and I'm like, wait a second. Cause I mean, I, I've done over 500 shows at this point. So now wow. it's like, so it's like, wait a second. The first few times it happened, I didn't get it. I'm like, this person doesn't care. They will talk yeah. about housewives. They will talk about this. They don't care. They were never, it's not coming from them. This is not, it's their team. That's just randomly trying to earn a paycheck of like, of I'm like, like when I had like, for instance, Dorinda on, it was about her book. It was yes. booked through, it was booked through the publishing people. And of course they wanted to focus. We're going to focus all on the book people. And of course. Is, and I push back. I'm always like, we'll focus on the book, you know, minute one, minute 30, but I need five minutes at the end to mention the word New York housewives and ask like a few questions. Of course. I mean, that's the other thing. I only need to blow it up and to get mm -hmm. the press and get the, I truly only need like one question if you really want to back me into the wall. But the, I mean, we can talk about, I mean, New York Housewives is in the book, but right. they were like, no, no, no. I'm like, fine. Five minutes at the end, New York Housewives. I mean, we were like a minute into it and during just talking about Roni and it's yes. like, oh, please, this, this is like, she doesn't, I mean, it's part, we talked about the book and her yeah, life, yeah. but I mean, New York is a huge, so it was like, I'm like, oh, she doesn't care. And so no. that's what I realized too. Like you get these lists and you get the person on the phone. You're like, this person isn't even privy to what you were told not to talk about. Well, and it's funny. You even got a response from them because I sent several emails and follow-ups and even wrote to like the vice president of the pub of the publicity and never heard back. And uh, uh, I don't know if that was because they were just busy or what. So it's funny. I mean, it's, so it's I'm glad you got a response, but I sent several emails because I wanted to get Dorinda on here to talk about the book and, and stuff and never heard back. So 
Um, that's great. It's funny you got a response. Uh, not shading anyone, just not no. shading them, but just not shading them. But um, I think it's I, I Dorinda. I met her at her book signing in August, and she does seem like that person that would like be so down to like as you said, have have you on, and she just starts talking about really anything. I mean, she is that you know beautifully scattered like brain person where she's all over in the best way possible. You know, she was a great interview. Yeah, great. she really was. I, I really liked her. Yeah. Oh, I, I, she makes it nice. I, let me tell you, anytime I have a house party here, I always, I always laugh. I always laugh with my friends. We're always like, I cooked all day. I decorated, I did it nice. You know, um, believe it or not, actually, I actually had my own Dorinda moment years ago at a party I threw. I had a former friend who came in and it was sort of, we, we left sort of the Ramona of the group because came in was like, Oh, it's too bright in here. Started adjusting the lights without permission said it was too hot, even though I had, literally cooked all day and I knew it was hot and you know I was self-conscious about it then this the guacamole was not salty enough for them so they took the salt out of the uh, out of my cabinet without asking poured it on the whole guacamole and salted it and you know me I don't like I don't like confrontation so I didn't really say anything but I was like oh my god and uh needless to say it was it was a true sort of uh it could have been written for reality tv because I was just like is this real? And what I, is wrong with people? Like, I know it was. Crazy. I understand you might want to do that, but like, <laughs> would you ever like go to someone oh, yeah. and do that? Like, I, I don't get no. it. No, and I, I would. Know. I mean, I mean, maybe if you had the guacamole on your plate and would say, you know, uh, you know, but it was, it's insane. So, uh, now, what is a day to day like for David at Behind the Velvet Rope? I mean, you said now you're five days a week; it's a full business. So. So sort of take us through a day to day. I know you have a team. You know, I remember us talking. You have a team. I know you social media as assistants and stuff. So, what's a day to day like for you? I mean, listen, a day to day is just like there's never enough time in the day. I mean, I would say you're catching me at a time of like this weekend and Friday. I'm like, this is slowly starting to be what a normal person should be working. The past <laughs> five, five weeks it seems like it's just been worse than ever, like horrible. Wow. But you know, a day to day is like, I usually like to start work at like, I mean, eight o'clock at the latest, but often eight, but I, yeah, like eight's a good time. Sometimes yeah. earlier, That's I great. probably work to like eight or nine PM ish, wow. give or take. And it's just, listen, it's like, you have your interviews. I truly try to, in an ideal world, not schedule more than one interview a day. And nothing is like in real time and there's no like first in, you know, last out. It literally is just like whatever's released. I have my method to my madness, but right. I really try to not do more than one interview a day. That like last week I had one day where I had three interviews in a day. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. So, a typical day is like doing the interview of the day, whatever time it is. It's preparing. I mean, with five shows a week, it's always just preparing like the next up. Like you need to have your week locked in. There's ads in my show. You have to record ads. So it really is like doing everything at once. Interviewing, preparing next week's shows, recording ads. In an ideal world when the sh machine is running properly, I'm always a week ahead. So on Monday, I am doing next Monday's show, like not yeah. recording it, but locking it in. Where are the ads? It's, you know, I mean, so it's like everything just, and then preparing for these shows. Now, again, I've gotten everything down from doing 500 plus shows, but it's still, there takes a long time to prepare for certain shows. Yeah. Reality people in a way are more difficult to prepare for because there's like if your career and there's just big picture overarching like well tell me about when you were in that or like wait you started that with madonna like tell me all about that so it's like projects with reality tv it's like it's tied to specific you said this and she said this and it's like there's just a lot of things that you need to get into in, in a sense so mm -hmm. it's more tied to like drama and specifics that you really just have to like Google and you're like, oh, wait, I forgot it. And not that you have to mention everything. You can do whatever you want, but it's like, there are just certain things where you're like, oh, I, I would have missed that. And I really want to bring that up. Yeah. 
And do you watch all of these shows too? I mean, obviously there's the Housewives, which I know you watch, but do you watch like Summer House and Below Deck and uh, all this, like all these, you have people from literally all these reality shows. So do you watch all of them or is a lot of it like you just go back and watch clips or, you know, you you read, you know, recaps and stuff like that? I watch pretty much everything oh, ish, pretty much, you yeah. know, like I would say, I'm Bravo. Yeah. I'm like selling sunset. I just had a bunch of people on. So like, I do watch a lot of these things. I would say there are certain shows that I don't watch, not really Bravo, but just I've interviewed people from shows I don't watch. Yeah. I remember once MTV was like, you know, who, who do you want from Florida, Bama shore? And I'm like, well, this is on brand people, but I'm like, I'm not watching Florida, Bama shore. I don't <laughs> think we have time. And I was able to just piece together an interview with this person like enough and i mean i also get sent books like and that's the other thing i yeah. i like i i get screeners so like if netflix is like you're going to interview these people from selling sunset like they'll drop this like i had selling sunset like four weeks before the thing came out so it's like i guess that's that's where it's like it makes my life easier but i interview people for books all the time that i have not read all the time well i was gonna say you must have a stack piled high of arcs of advanced copies i mean i love a good i love when i get a i love a good advanced copy because it's it's great and you know i do try to read all of them but you must have a stack full of all of all of these people who release books that you have on the show i mean <laughs> that's where it's like you just fake it and you can yeah. i mean that's where it's just become easier where like yeah you can google and you're like okay so i get this main concept that i get this main concept and yes you know i can piece together enough to ask them and then just let them talk and that's all anyone i mean i, I have to say with books i can't remember actually the last time i did read a book that <laughs> i interviewed the person on i just yeah physically do not have this it can't happen it can't yeah happen. no i I, I agree. I totally agree. And fake it till you make it, as they say, you know, and it's I, I'm that same way. There's been so many times where I've talked to people um, who it's who it's been like, oh, my God, even on my live talk show that I do in person, Broadway talk show, I've had people on and I'm like, how am I going to make this an hour show? And you just I you make it you stretch, you make it work. And it's it's I mean, it's magic sometimes. But as you said, it's just like the little things. And as I say to them, like talk, like be long winded. But you, you know, you push it, you, you push, put, put it together. You have the pieces together and it always comes out, you know, you're like, Oh wow, I made that work. It does. And that's the other thing too. Like a lot of times I'll have people are like, why is this? So I'm like, a lot of times you will have agents and managers who are like, honey, you're getting 30 minutes. You're like, yes. an hour, slow your, slow your ass down. And so like, look, I mean, I really say yes to almost anything within reason because you could still make it work like 30 minutes with whoever is better than zero and oh my gosh i can make it work but yeah, oh, yeah. as far as reading a book yeah that's not <laughs> totally don't blame you on that i love reading but it's it, there's so many there are so many uh so many books out there and they're really there's so it's many pages not enough time i i agree now uh, what what is your advice for people who have a podcast that want to leverage it to um actually make money from it you know you have ads and stuff so like what is your advice and how do you sort of um you know, obviously you have a big listenership, but is, do you find that you make uh, an income from the podcast or from the having that third party from a Patreon? What's your advice for those who, you know, everybody has a podcast today. What's your advice for them? And I do consulting on the side for this very question because um, people were like, I don't get it. Like, look, here's the bottom line. Most podcasts just never make money. That is the true yeah. statement. It's true. Right. And then there are podcasts that make a little bit of money. And then it's really rare that podcasts, it's a real business. But this is a real business. I mean, look, I think that I, my advice is, look, I mean, I'm in my third year. And there's certain, for me, like, I think year one is like, you just got to grow it. But yes. as far as advice, I mean, I think you have to have, like my show has morphed into something, like I said, that I didn't really anticipate. But I think when you start, you have to have a clear vision of like what your show is. I think it's like, you know, like if you're talking about dating and then you're talking about food, like what is your show? I mean, like 
I don't know. I think just a show that doesn't have a theme like yours might be Broadway or whatever. But like it needs to have some central theme that you can, of course, venture outside of that, but right. not really. And you can venture outside of it a lot more once you have a big audience. Yeah. Right. Like I've come back to my stories now one day a week, but I never would have done that even a year and a half ago because we were building interviews. We were building, I want the Countess. I want this one. I want that one. Susan Lucci, Fran Drescher has been on, Suzanne Summers. All these millennials are probably like, who are you talking about? <gasps> yes, these people are older, but they're fucking legends. Sorry. I know. No, it's, I'll dare people not know who they are. I mean. <laughs> I, literally. I mean, and that's, and so it's like, I think you just have to have a real vision in the beginning about, and I think consistency. I do mm. not think like, why is this podcast? If this podcast goes out Wednesday at 9 a.m., you can put it out at 8.45. You can put it out at 9.20. You shouldn't put it out Thursday at 9 p.m. when it normally comes out. When What happened? What's right. going on here? So I don't care. I think a bad show is better than no show. So if you're, if you're the date and a time that that podcast comes out, you stick to it and stick to an approximate length. If your show is 45 minutes, it should be 40 minutes. It should be 56 minutes. One show should not be 20 minutes and the next show should be four hours. I've, I've seen all of this as crazy as this sounds. Right. I don't understand what's going on here. So I think like in the beginning, you have to have a consistent product that hardly veers from that model. Yes. Period. And that is really the, one of the basic things. And I think you need to have a vision two of what the show is. And three, I think you need to have a vision of like, what are your goals? Cause like when I consult and people pay for my consulting fee and my first question what? always is like, what do you want out of this? And it's like every time and there's dead silence. I'm like, we're on the zoom. Like, I don't, that's like, what is your goal here? Right. Cause if your goal is to drink wine with you, like one girl, <laughs> no, it was like, she had her and her mom every Friday. I'm like, so if your goal is just to bond with your mom and have wine and talk. And I'm like, I don't even know why you paid me. Now there's no money back. There's right, no right. money back once you pay my fee. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to finish our hour here. Yeah. But like you're meeting your goal. Your goal is to chat with your mom and then go, honey, go. Like you don't need yeah. my help. Like life is good. If your goal now is to have a business and make money, now we have a whole, di so it's like a lot of people don't know how to answer that first question. Like, what is your goal? Like, you should just know what you really want out of this. You, there's no pressure from anyone. You don't have to make it a business. But mm -hmm. if that's your goal, it's just like a whole different thing. And I find with most podcasters, especially like in the Bravo, it's like, it's so strange. It's like yeah. all of you none of you are making any money and it's all ego this one's mad at that one they had this i'm like this is all just oh. bullshit noise like yeah. i want no part of that like i just kind of came in and said bye everyone and went right to the top of the charts i'm like i don't want to be part of any of this nonsense because it's just ego so oh. I, I do i find that that's a thing with podcasters they want to hear their own voice so wow. i just you know so i think that's that's those are the first advices in like the first year when i was building i stuck to that and i'm like just build the second year it's kind of like we have something now the guests are bigger now it's like what really works that's when for me i love the numbers let's get into the numbers and i can tell you now 99 percent of the time i can tell you this show is going to be in the top this show is so self-indulgent david like you love whoever you know this celebrity is and like, right. it's probably not gonna and i can predict what's gonna be highly listened to and listen and that is my luxury with five days a week we don't have to have all but it's like really figuring out in year two of like what is work because that's the thing have your goal and have consistency but be adaptable right like okay. i think that's the other thing too with people just in business in general, like you get in your own way. Like if you think your vision is A and the whole world is kind of telling you, look at B, you know, again, like with Kim D, I'm like, she's my really good friend. I mean, like, why the hell are we in year three? And I never had my really good friend that I speak to 8,000 times a day doing New Jersey recaps. Like, right. Um, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like when you start, like you start dating someone Mm -hmm. madly in love and you're like we've been friends for four years like where have you been right, right next to right. me 
it's like that. It was like, oh. And I didn't think Kim was going to stay, but she did. And now I'm like, this is like one of our most popular things we've ever done. So yes. it's kind of like listen to the marketplace and the numbers and have your vision. But don't, don't, don't be so insular that you're not looking and making make right. changes. Fine. You can yeah. make changes a lot, but just have some vision. And then like, so for me, that was year two. And now that it's year three, it's like, I could just, like, I could tell you, I could tell you now, this show is a blockbuster. This is this. Yeah. There's very few surprises. Wow. There are some surprises where I'll interview someone. I'll be like, oh, how is this? Like recently, this is just an example. I was pitched the owner of Seeking Arrangement. Do you know that website? It's yes. literally about Seeking Arrangement. Yep. You're a young man or woman and you are very attractive and you want an old, rich man or woman. It's just how it sounds. Sugar yep. daddy dating, although they rebrand it much different and i was pitched like the owner and his girlfriend who's much younger he met her on the site and i'm like you know okay like we have five days a week friday is usually like our lighter show and i'm like right. i mean these people aren't a na- they're not a name it's not no. you know countess or suzanne summers or fran drescher or all these guests i've had susan lucci i'm like i don't i mean i don't know who's gonna listen to this but it, it's easy like who cares let's just prepare something fun treat them like they're madonna like on the show like let's treat them like a list um or patty lapone i'll make a broadway reference for yes. all these people listening <laughs> but you know they came on and they, they were great but like i was like it was like and i was like i, I can do my bravo spin i said i have to ask them about it. You tell them they better know about Erica Jane and Tom Girardi. Like I was right, Ashley right. Darby. Like I'm gonna relate this. Okay, great. This episode was like so highly rated for like wow. so many days, and I'm like, I just like, do people are people aware of seeking arrangement? Are people interested? <laughs> I just, I just literally, this was really like within the past month. I just was like, I never thought this would even. And not the goal shouldn't always be to chart, but I just of course. one of those things where like. Like, I don't know what I did here right. in this episode. <laughs> is it the title? Is it like, what did, why what are people listening yes. to this? It, so right. it, I am wrong sometimes. I of am. Course, and then there course. are others, but it's usually like, if something's not going to really be a blockbuster, I say that's, it's always right. like, but I was like, I don't know why this is such a popular <laughs> episode. I don't understand. Like, well, no one knows these two people's names. It's right. Weird. Exactly. Well, I think, I mean, such great advice. I think anybody listening should take that advice. I think it is so great. Have a vision. But also, I love that whole, you know, I can't, be, I mean, it's not shocking to me that there's Bravo podcasts that are egotistical. I mean, that sort of goes hand in hand to what Bravo is with drama. Um, and it's, you know, you've clearly risen above the rest of them. And I think that, listen, you can be good at something and not have an ego. You know, I think, I think having an ego and, uh, Listen, it comes back to haunt you too. I mean, I'm sure these people uh, are not being asked to do sort of the things you're getting asked to do because you're easy to work with. You know, you know, they may be all about themselves. And uh, it's funny because with my show here, this digital show that you're on, I do Broadway and pop culture. And that's sort of the two ways where I veer. In person, the weekly Broadway talk show I do is solidly Broadway, theater, all of that good stuff. And then on here, I've been morphing more towards entertainment, pop culture of what I love. But as you said, like, I, I will probably never have someone that is like a food or a chef or a, you know, or a lifestyle like expert because it's like, you know, how does that relate to, you know, uh, entertainment or pop culture, right? Unless they are a Rachel Ray or a Tabitha right. or something. And, you know, you kind of have to know. And I'm in the process now of taking these digital episodes because I have about 63 of these digital wow. shows that I've done since fall of 2020 when I launched live with Ryan, that is the pandemic that I'm going to probably turn into a podcast because, you know, everybody had said for a while, Oh, I want to be on your podcast. I want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, it's not a podcast. It's a live, you know, it's a virtual show, but then realizing that, well, listen, everyone's saying it, the market's out there. I have this content. You should just put it out there. And I have some, I mean, I have some great interviews and people who are like in the, not only Broadway world, but like popular Canadian actors and Disney channel stars. And I'm like, you know, even if they're two years old, like put them out there and continue to record and, and, you know, just, you know, podcast is all the rage, like get it out there and have the live with Rye podcast. And, uh, you know, cause I'm sitting on all these episodes that I have saved. So, you know, it's. You... No, I mean, I don't mean I you finished. Yeah. I need to cut you off, but I was going to say two things. I have something to say about that in a second, but first of all, I say that all the time. I'm like, 
there is a difference between having an ego and being confident. Like I'm confident, yes. but you know, of course the difference is like an ego is like, you know, well, of course this person's going to come on my show. Like I like being confident is me of saying like, I work like a dog till <laughs> I'm ready to drop dead at the computer every night. And in three years, I'm not, who the hell am I? If I don't produce for these people that listen, I mean, they will forget that I had on Susan Lucci and fr they will not give a shit. Like I better produce every day and I'm only as good as my last show and I better work my ass off. And I'm great at what I do. Phenomenal. But that's not an ego. That's mm -hmm. just an ego is like, you know, it's like you're not self-aware. That's when you right. need the self-awareness and you're like, like when someone mm -hmm. like a black child, some like people are like, well, of course, black China is reaching out to you. I'm like, not really, not really. There's no reason that I should have a woman going through a major lawsuit with like the most famous family possibly that's ever existed in America at this point. And like, we are now, yes, there was like, I was allowed like very limited Kardashian questions. Of course. Uh, I got what I needed. But, but as far as what you're saying is like, that's the other thing. It's like, use your content. Like, I'm always looking to grow. So like I started the podcast. Now I have a booming behind the velvet rope YouTube channel, which gets it's grown somehow. Also, that was like my little side project. <coughs> Excuse me. Like it's, it's grown. So yeah. that was where it was like, wait, I'm recording everything I do on zoom. And I have videos of, of a Fran Drescher, like reacting with her face. And I have like this and I'm like, I have all these people's faces. I have videos. I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing with all these fucking videos? We have a YouTube channel, people, and come and watch. And it, so to your point, if you have all this already recorded, you basically have 63 episodes. So if you're going to put out one a week, you have a whole year of a podcast. You don't even have to do anything. I mean, you have to right. do a little bit, of but course. very few, little. So that, yeah. who knows? like what the downloads could be in that. So it's just like, and my YouTube makes money now. So to me, it's like, if you, you shocked at like what you're sitting on, you know, exactly. like if you just have it, right. that's how I went to five days a week. I was yeah. like, wait, if my show is sold for the downloads, and if I even add one episode that three people listen to, it's three more downloads, I'm already going to make more money. That's right. why I'm like, why aren't we five days? You know what I mean? I just, exactly. so if you have the content, you should probably just do it. And, and I'm definitely thinking about it. And also it's great to add, I think, to my portfolio as well to have, you know, a podcast added to already of my, you know, my website, a talk show. So I figure it, it's great to have. And so I'm in the process of, of doing that. Um, I understand though that, you know, you have, so you have all this experience. I understand you're in the process of writing a book about your experience behind the velvet rope. So tell us a little bit about that. Is there, when is that? What can we expect? Is it in the well, beginning? The bottom line is I wrote a book uh -huh. during COVID because oh. building a podcast wasn't enough when we were trapped at home. Wow. So every morning I would walk for an hour, mm -hmm. like at the crack of dawn. And literally, I mean, I wrote the book, but I had someone else helping me who would literally take notes and, and I, I would literally would dictate sentences to someone. So I basically wrote a book during COVID. Wow. Which is written now it's like, it's outdated in a sense that like, I have a different perspective on certain things, but there was a book and then we were going down that road. And then here we are busy working 24 <laughs> seven. I really should just self publish this book because people ask yeah. about it and it's really written for the most part. I think it needs to be edited down a little bit. Like I think it's overkill. I think it's, a, I, I forgot how long it is, but it's long. Wow. Like the book is kind of just written and sitting here waiting to Amazing. be tucked it off, <laughs> revamped a little and put out to the world. So I really should do that. You should. I I would I would totally, and I'm not just saying this, I would totally read this book because That's I think you have so time. much to talk about. And I think self-publishing is smart, but you also think about maybe shopping it around to, I mean, you have the followers, you have the, like the, like you have enough press and followers and traction that like one of these publishing houses could pick and up we people. did shop it and like there was an agent and there yeah. was things it just never really it just got stalled in the process then i right. literally got so busy i was like i just can't like 
Because I look at some of these people who are on these reality TV shows who I don't even know from a drop in the bucket. And I'm like, if this person has a book out, you know, I think anybody can have it. And you're, and you're a lot of these people who I see, you're much, you know, better and smarter and more and have more to say than them. And I'm like, so, you know, it's they got kind of the next step. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. So I know this might be a tough question, but who has been your favorite guest that you've had uh, on behind the velvet rope? Like everyone always asks that. I mean, it, it changes in the sense that like, look, we're always doing new interviews, but just without overthinking it, if I was going to divide it between reality and non-reality, mm -hmm. non-reality, I, a lot of the people I mentioned, I loved Susan Lucci, loved, I mean, just, I don't even know where to begin. Fran Drescher has been on twice. It's like, wow. I mean, she I made mean? her do the iconic Fran laugh. <laughs> Suzanne Summers. I mean, what? Like, right. what's going on here, people? Those are kind of, I'm trying to think if there's anyone that really sticks out. Look, there's other like nuanced ones like Gabrielle Carteris. I love 90210. But like, mm -hmm. I really think like Fran, Suzanne, and Susan Lucci are probably three of the absolute my favorites. Just in terms of like, yeah, what is my life? And like you, Susan Lucci had nothing to promote, no wow. reason to do it. I had someone who knew someone who was her assistant, and it was just this thing that we worked on. It just happened. And do you, do you find like, do they still keep, do you keep in touch with a lot of your guests or do you have guests who like you don't expect and there's, and maybe they're DMing you on Instagram or they're responding to your post. Like you've kind of made maybe a friend in your head or a virtual or a, you know, Instagram friend from these people who, you know, you may not have thought that they would have, you know, started interacting or liking your stuff. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Like you know. there are times that people that come on the show will want to keep in touch with me more than I necessarily have time to keep in touch with them. And I'm right. like, it's not, but yes, like you do, you keep in touch. And like, if I saw Fran Drescher across a room, like, no, I don't expect, but I would go over to her and be like, you know, and she would be like, oh my God. Yeah. I know exactly who you are. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. expect Fran to pick up the phone and call me, but people do, you keep in touch and people like stuff and they, you know, it's just that, so that's where the job gets easier when you kind of need someone back on a second time. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. You've had some in awesome, awesome guests uh, for sure. Now I'm curious, are there, because it seems to be all the rage these days too, that podcasts do live shows like in person and go out on the road. Is there any sort of uh, things in the work for a live show or a behind the velvet rope, you know, in person somewhere? That's where everything is headed. I mean, I get that. Yes. Yes. And yes. With the caveat that again, I go back to ego. I don't need to mention any names. There are certain live shows that you see them and you're like, well, okay. If they have a live show, why don't you? And you're like, mm -hmm. their live show is not making any money. Just FYI. Like wow. this is an ego thing of like, let's do this. And so, you know, it's, it takes money, you know, it takes yeah. money to make money. Sure. That's, but I will do it in the right way. Like I am not going on some national tour just for my ego to say, yeah. come and see me live. And I've seen a lot of these live podcasts, which we don't need to mention any names. Right. Lots of them are bad, really bad. I'm people. sure. It's like, it's so different. It's so different. Now I do have an idea. Good. That. I think would work. I think it would. Well, you're it, wouldn't, it would be, you know, me and, but there would be people, other people involved. And so I just think I, if I really, I, I could do this, but it's a whole thing. I mean, you need someone yes. involved and like, you really just, you need someone involved that knows what they're doing about like what the house needs to make and what you're going to, and I'm not saying I need to make a gazillion dollars. It's just, I'm not doing it just for my ego to say, I mean, I could go do this tomorrow. I mean, of you course. can go do this tomorrow. You can pick up the phone and call Town Hall or City Winery or any of these. And they would, I mean, if you want to pay the fee to rent out the whole venue, they, right. you could have your live show there tomorrow, honey. Exactly. They, you could have one person show up. They don't care. You just pay that money. You could rent out Madison Square Garden if you want tomorrow. 
but we're going to do it when it makes actual money, but it's, it's, it's in the works and I have an idea. I have a good idea for a live show. Well, that's so exciting to hear um, because I will definitely be there. And I think, well, I know, not think, I know your idea is going to be incredible because you are so smart with all of this stuff. So it's going to really be, I think, different that we've never seen before. And it's going to be so successful. Um, and I'm really excited to see it. Thank you. There'll yeah. definitely be a New York date. Amazing. There should be, yes. There'll be a New Jersey date. Well, and speaking of New Jersey... You know, we just had this week the real the Real Housewives of New Jersey Part One reunion. What did you think of you know briefly? What did you think of this season of New Jersey? And what was your thoughts of Part One of the reunion? I mean, I have to say it was a pretty explosive reunion. I think personally one of the best reunions there's been in a bit. And Jersey this season, I mean, they're bringing it compared to OC and some of these other low rated. Um, I mean, unfortunately, you know, New York or some of these other ones that are dropping. New Jersey really brought it. And I, you know, what are your thoughts? I mean, even Atlanta premiered to down ratings. Like New wow. Jersey was over a million all season, which back in the day, we may not be thrilled about that, but we are now. I mean, yeah. OC is, I was under a million all season, more or less. Yeah. New York, Atlanta started under a million. So it's like, we're in a different time period. I think that New Jersey had a great season. They brought it. I understand some of what's going on now where like, you know, Jackie might be like a friend of like, look, New Jersey hasn't changed things up in a really long time. They as haven't. Far as the cast. I think it was a great season though. I think it was a great reunion. I mean, but don't you think yeah. they need to change things up? I mean, I think it's kind of, for me, I don't understand how they could go into another season with everyone as it is without some major shakeup, because I think yeah. we're taught, I know I am. I think we're tired of seeing the same storyline like this is the same storyline as this season just now the feud is going to be escalated probably between Teresa and margaret and now she's going to be mad at joe and melissa like what it's going to be an us versus them like there's got to be a shake-up of some sort well i talk about this on my show with kim i don't know if it was this past week or coming up but that's the thing it's like everyone's saying to me like how could jackie be demoted and i'm like i never would have predicted this at this point but right. Now that it's happened, this makes 100% sense, sense to me. It's like, mm -hmm. the thing is, like, to be a good housewife, you have to have two things. You have to, A, engage in the whole group and speak yeah. up and, and be something. And, B, you have to have your own personal story, something going on. And I'm not saying Jackie has anything less than, like, Dolores. or Jack She's right. equal. But the thing is, where do we go after Jackie bared her soul right. with an eating disorder that she had from the beginning of time? Like this was, and I'm not judging. I'm just telling you. No, of course, producer, of course. I mean, this is how I think. It's like we went there. And so where does Jackie's story go? It's like, no, because she bared her soul and had her best season yeah. is why she's demoted. There's nowhere to go. Mm. She can't be like cutting off crust on, on, on peanut butter and jelly <laughs> sandwiches now like where does jackie's story go i mean i guess it's just there there could have been potential i think that's a main reason and two i do think we haven't changed it up in a long time and three it's like it's not going to be you know margaret versus Teresa. we're not doing that again we just did no. it so you have three very aligned people that are very close melissa jackie and margaret right. that are not thrilled with Teresa. And it's like, you have to cut off one of those octopuses' arms to mix this up. It ain't going to be Margaret at this point, and it ain't going to be Melissa. It's like, no. by process of elimination, Jackie's wonderful. I love her. But just by right. process of elimination, this was the one sacrificial lamb who can change this show the most. And so it makes sense. It's going to really? be, right? It's going to be like. Know? Because I, I feel like even cutting off Jackie let's say from it, I feel like, is that really even going to change it? Cause you still have, I mean, Melissa and Margaret who are tight, which is great. And Dolores, but you still have this. I mean, Margaret obviously is not making up with Teresa anytime soon, rightfully. So we've seen after the reunion, how Teresa treated Melissa. So there's still going to be that tension. And I mean, what do you, I mean, Jen is still going to be, you know, kissing her butt. So what, that's why it's like, you know, what now, unless these rumored new girls are going to really be shaken up, what do you, what do you do aside of like, unless Teresa comes in and starts like re revamps herself and is like, Oh, I'm sorry, which she never would. 
what, where do you go other than like, everyone's mad at Teresa, Dolores is still in the middle, you know, Jen is still taking Teresa's side. I mean, I, I, I'm wondering, you know, is, is demoting Jackie to friend of, if that's true, just enough? Well, I think they're going to try. Well, first of all, Dolores and Jen are now going to fight all season. True. So that's going to yeah. happen. Melissa and Teresa, I mean, we haven't really seen that in many seats. Like, re- like, Melissa has been really trying. She's been yes. quiet. And I think that's going to explode old school, Ugh. Teresa. But I also think they're really going to try to now bring these new people. I mean, they are bringing these new people in. Nobody's a yeah. friend of anybody. We have Teresa gets a picture with, you know, Danielle and Rachel gets a picture with Melissa. So we have one dinner going on over here. And it really is like, don't think that this isn't like, it is like a Teresa goes home and says, yes, chemistry, fine, get her in. Melissa goes home and says, chemistry, fine. Bring, I mean, it's that simple. But those dinners are, there's, there's no, there's no, Dyna- no, it's like you're going now and this dinner, if you want on the show, is mm-hmm. your audition because Teresa's observing everything. And you over here, Melissa and Joe are observing everything. So you so but I do think these three and then I think they're gonna try. I mean, they've tried. It's True. not working. They've tried. No. Michelle Pay- they have tried to mix this up for they a have. Very long time. It's not working. But I don't think that's everything. And look, I think eventually, not so far in the day in the near future, I think Jen will have her day where it's time to go. She's great. Right. She's great with the one-liners. She doesn't True. care. She's, but eventually, it's listen. We it's going to be like. I mean, look at Beverly Hills. Can we really remember the exact episodes and what it was like before Rinna, Erica, and Dorit? And give it a year, and we'll be throwing Sutton right up there. So right. we've we've moved on from. I mean, of course, we love LVP and Eileen and. But and Yolanda, but we we don't really remember that so vividly. Like in New Jersey, do we really remember the years of watching Kathy Wakili and Jacqueline was on the show forever? Yeah, Danielle Staub. So eventually, we will be talking about Jennifer the same way as they're they're going to go. Okay. And Dolores eventually is going to have her her day. Well, true. And I- yeah. I think Margaret, eventually, listen. Eventually. Margaret was just on my podcast and yes. she said, you know, this isn't the Teresa show. It's an ensemble. It, I get it, but I mean, but it, Melissa. But it also is, I think, is. the Teresa show it because is. she is the highest paid housewife. She's one of the most popular ones. I mean, she's in that top sort of three OG. I think you've said it a few times. It's like her, Nini, Bethany, maybe. And I think there was maybe one or two others that are like, when you think of housewives sort of prism, like these are the. Oh, geez. And so I, you know, there is is not going anywhere ever. And no, by process of elimination, like Melissa's going to be there. Just, just, I mean, for that and Joe Gorga, Joe Gorga to me is the most powerful house husband that's ever existed. Really? Yes. So they're not going anywhere. So it's like, I just think at some point we're going to look back and say, like, remember when Jennifer was on and Jackie and Dolores, yeah. to the extent this goes on, like they're, they're going to like, we never understand the changes happening, but then it, it happens. And then you're back for your second season and third season. And all of a sudden the show has just morphed into something different. That's what New Jersey's trying. They've been trying it, but I think yeah. there's three people in this demotion. They're really going to somehow have to mix something in because yeah. it will not be, this angst of Margaret versus Teresa. They're not, it's not. I hope not. I hope not. <coughs> well, as we, as we get ready to finish up here, I do have a, another question for you. I am so curious because you are the go-to with all things housewives. You have been at all of these events. You, you've been taking pictures, you know, you know, the perfect angle, you know, like you've flown across countries for events. And so with the uptick of new books coming out, new housewives events coming out, Bravo con is happening. What is one yeah. thing people should know when they, meet their favorite housewife what is sort of housewife etiquette 101 as I, as you would say when you meet your favorite housewife or even reality star that you would really give off as a like hey do this or definitely don't do that i think with housewives specifically mm-hmm. a certain type is cast producers know what they're doing of course we make mistakes we have one season wonders but there is a certain type and maybe reality stars in general, because that mm-hmm. is the job, but it's all about them. So, you know, and, and this is not me 
this is not me patting myself on the back, but it is hard. Like, just don't expect to become friends with these people. Like, if you yeah. want your picture, you can get your picture and just, like, take that for what it is. You got your picture. I think most of these people, if you ask for a picture, reality will say yes. So yes. minus Ramona, but yes. Approach, right. Minus Ramona. So just approach. Right. It's fine. But if you think now that you said something and there's going to be DMs and they'll DM back and everybody, like no one's going to really become your friend. And you shouldn't want that. You know, right. you should not want that. Yes. You've got a lot going on. And what is even that? You know what I mean? So it's just like, that's my advice. <laughs> just like, <laughs> if you want a picture, absolutely. Get it. Go for it. Who doesn't want a picture? I mean, that's the world we live in, people. Yes. And just have your moment. But I mean, just expect it. I mean, that's where you say, like, do you become friends with these people that are on your show? And I do. But it really is organic. It's organic. And a lot of times it's like, you would be friends with these people if not for life. Like you, it's, it's a real connection. It's a real, I mean, I've had people say like, when I'm in New York, we're going to have drinks. When you're in LA, and it, it really is authentic on both sides in the moment. And then life gets in the way and you're like, I mean, I do five shows a week. I can't keep up with everybody. Yeah. But if I saw like, again, like a friend, like I would say, remember, and do, do, yes, of course. But like, so it's just like, Life gets in the way, so you shouldn't really you you don't you don't have time. Whoever you are listening to be friends with these people either. I mean, that sounds great, right. except you've got your own shit in life going on. And why should your goal be to want to be friends with these specific people? You're just as good, just because you're not on TV. Who cares? Right. Like that's what you learn after doing five shows a week. And all these people are just human beings. Some of them are great, and some of them are just awful. Yep. Beings, that you scratch below the surface and you shouldn't want to be friends with some of these people anyway. And if you think right. about it, some of the people that you want the picture with still get the picture because I'm going to get the picture too. Of course. If you really scratch below the surface and ask yourself, like some of these people are great. Like you say, Margaret, absolutely. Oh but some God. of them you have to think like, if this person were like my next door neighbor or the person I talk to every morning at the coffee shop, would you want to be friends with this person if they weren't on this TV show? Like, is this really, do you have anything in common with this person? Do you really right. forget about them? Don't put them on a pedestal. That's my advice. I think, wow, that's really great advice. And I think that's my advice. Yeah. I think it's great. And I think a lot of people forget that and don't realize that and want to sort of just be that, you know, that artificial friend or they think like, Oh, you know, yeah, I met this person. And like, you know, or these, you see a lot of these people even like who are out in the middle of the country or even, you know, who aren't necessarily engaged in like sit, who don't live in these big cities that are like, Oh yeah. You know, I got the picture with the person and now they want to be, you know, um, best friends. I've seen, I've also seen some cringe moments at um, meet and greets too, where they just are, you know, just inappropriate or just saying things that maybe aren't, you know, and it's like, it, but that's a really good, good and, advice and right and like just think about it like a meet and greet i mean i think that's also why i get people on my show it's like this is where e their ego and confidence are different like there's nothing like this person david is here like dorinda medley to sell the book like mm -hmm. the next person who's next they're there so it's, it's that's where to me it's like i'm really good at like look you give me what i want I'm going to give you what you want. Like I just had Matt James on from The Bachelor. Right. Once we're done, I'm done asking you about Tyler Cameron and Kristen Cavallari. I mean, this is your best friend, dude. Yeah. Is he, is he with Kristen or not? Because I know everyone says no and they've said, I I'm going to ask you that question. And That's I want to know, you know, all this contra. I mean, you are dating a woman, you know, you're the first black bachelor and you're dating a woman that had these racially insensitive pictures and we've all moved on, but I got some questions. So once I get all my drama out, we're going to talk about your charity now and your book and your soda and your <laughs> new, like it works both ways. So yes. I think that's the thing too, is like when you are at, especially a meet and greet, like this person, you say what you want. They're there to, to put a dollar in their pocket. You've now spent money. You took of the course. train, the bus, the plane, you're buying the book. You might. So like, just keep that in mind that this interaction is, you know, sure. There are certain people, there are genuine moments, right? But they're there to sell this, and like that's that's that day. Tomorrow they're going to be on to something else. Yeah. Right. 
And they'll forget like, all about they'll forget all about you. Yes. Really. And so just keep that in mind of like, yeah. Right? Like yeah, that's I agree. What I it agree. Is. Yeah. Again, like I say, I had a Susan Lucci, just yes, a friend of a friend. But 98% of the people, they're there for a reason. It's like they're yeah. there to promote something, to sell something. Someone is not just saying yes to like an interview or any exchange just for the sake. Yeah, of course, if you go up on the street. Then pictures, right, of course. But just don't, don't make yourself the little sub bitch of like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, like, look, yes. have your moment. You saw Countess Lamance Cabaret. It was great. You got your picture. I'm not to have a fun, exciting life, but of course, don't expect and want this like as your goal. Right. Of Move course. on. Move on. Yes. You know, like I turned mine into a business and I can say that it always wasn't. And I knew it was leading to something, but it's not about, you know, it's like that's mm. like have your own things going on in life. That's my it's, advice. It's, yeah, I love it. That's the rare exception. Well, final question. I am so curious. What are your thoughts on Andy Cohen? And would you ever have, as people call him, Daddy Andy on your podcast? I have to say, David, I'm truly serious. I think you do hell of an interviews. I really think that they should consider bringing you, making your show sort of a Watch What Happens Live. Not replacement, but the place where these stars go. You are engaging, interacting, and I mean, people have their thoughts on Andy, but what what are your thoughts on Andy? And would you ever have him on your show? I mean, a lot of people say that they're like, why aren't you on as the bartender? Why aren't <laughs> you doing like an after show? It's right. like, call me, Bravo, call me. Please um, call him, call him. Right? I mean, a lot of people do seem to have a lot of opinions on Andy as the years go on. Look, I would love to have Andy on my yeah. show. I mean, I do have to say it's not impossible, but it definitely... When it gets in, first of all, Andy is extremely busy. I mean, having yes. nothing to do with having two children now, but just, you know, like when Sirius gets, look, there's a whole serious radio component to it. And there's like, you know, which again, I've booked plenty of people from Sirius, but it's, it's not, it's not, there's a whole different, but Andy can come on my show any day that he wants. You know, I think it's like when someone comes on, I truly, there's just truly things that I would want to ask him that are, yeah. You know, like, just, you're so interested of, like, did you know? Like, yeah, like, it's, like, hindsight is so 2020. And, like, it really and is. like, did you really, I mean, of course, you had an idea. You wouldn't have gone down this road. But, like, like, I tell you certain things weren't planned. Like, was this planned? Like, did you really understand? Like, I understand they changed the OC to, like, of OC. And right. Not really that. Actually, New York, I should say. Like, Manhattan Moms. And uh -huh. they got the vision. But, like, when like when did you see this real vision of, like, wow, this is a franchise. Like, this is it. Because really, yes. if you think about it, and this is no shade to Bravo, but where are we today in 2022 with Bravo without Housewives? And it's, it's I don't <laughs> think it's, it to me... I would be scared. Like if I were a network, I would say like my show is very heavily Bravo slanted people. I could have on the freaking every president of the United States and Beyonce and Jay-Z together. And people would rather have me talk to a housewife that hasn't been on the damn show for 15 years. <laughs> so that is the bread and butter of behind the velvet rope, but I will never be a hundred percent Bravo or housewife. It's a strange business model to me. So, like, remember the days where we had Jonathan Anton and Blowout and Tabitha and yeah. Patty and where are all these new Bravo shows? Yes, blah, 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 COVID. We're out of it. Where are these new shows? I agree. Where? I agree. It's like I we have one now, Love Match Atlanta. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, but I mean. Those, I were the, those were the peak days of Bravo, too. I mean, those Tabithas, the millionaire matchmakers, the, you're right. I mean, and they, we were throwing shit against the wall. We had eight, eight by design and, and, and that travel show. Lots of stuff failed, but at least yeah. we were throwing it against the wall. So where are all these new shows? And so with Housewife ratings down, down, down for most franchises, like I think New Jersey and Salt Lake had up seasons. Like, yeah. And that's, so I don't know. Look, I mean, they're not. They're, they're reinventing with Girls Trip. Maybe the answer is to take Salt Lake and go and have. But all I know is when you have two Ronies and now you have a big thing with how are we going to revamp the OC? Yeah. And we have a whole OC issue. That's a mess. Uh, and I'm not saying, but I just, if it were me, I would be looking 
bigger picture of like, what is, where are we going in 10 years, five years with this network? That's just me. And I think that would be a good question to, to ask Andy. I think if you, you know, got the chance, cause that would be, that'd be great. You know, he's very, he's, he's very talented, but I, I think, you know, uh, it, it's always amazing to me. I feel like sometimes he, he's, he's so talented, but I read a, his books and it just always seems like he seems sometimes in his books, like he was complaining and so ungrateful for the life he has, um, you know, and then, you know, he's, you know, it's like, I think anybody would kill to be in his spot. At least that's what I got from his books. And then, you know, he complained that he didn't have a love life or he didn't have a life. And then he has a kid and now he has two. Like, so, but he's, yeah, he's there's lots of other him. people without a love life that right. are just like living. And, and I mean, look, I don't even know if he cares, you know, I mean, I think that, yeah. look, I mean, everyone always says, watch what happens is going away. It's so lowly rated. You know, I think that I, I do think just once again, like as a producer, I think yeah. if there is a day when all of that, watch what happens and all of that is going to go away. I don't think Andy's, I think they will literally say, here's your buyout and here's your money. And just, really, I don't think that's going to happen now. No, I just no. think eventually, I think just to like, and who knows, like, listen, Maybe. it's a very hard thing to say. Like when you see Andy Cohn, like advertising Bravo con on his social, like Andy Cohn is not Bravo. He's now like, you know what I mean? He right. is now watch what happens. He doesn't work at corporate anymore. Right. Exactly. So if you think about it, it's really brilliant that somebody has made themselves the face of the network. Oh, totally. He's you know, very so, smart like that. And he's done. I mean, it's like, cool. why is he advertising BravoCon? He'll be at BravoCon for, he'll be a part of it. But I mean, he doesn't get the actual corporate money from BravoCon. That's not him. Right. Or he gets, quite a bit of money for being involved oh, but sure. like do you know what i mean so like yes. who knows like they could have watched what happened like just to be the face of a network like i don't know but i'm not so sure that andy would care you know what i mean like eventually yeah. i think like at some point this is not age shaming i'm not saying 50 something is old i'm just saying like when think about it when this is over where we talk about jennifer will be fired this one that one it's like really Andy's the one making all the money off all these houses. Yes, so it's true. Like at the end of the day, you know, they all work for daddy. And even the ones, you know, the $3 million of Teresa D DJ is the rare exception. It is. But daddy makes millions and millions and millions. And so yeah. when it's time to go, I mean, is he going to care? I mean, you always want more money, but right. Like there's other things. Maybe. Andy, I think could I do radio know. Andy for, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. True. True. I think, I don't know. I think he would care, but I also, as you said, he's got Radio Andy. He's got his career on top of that. I mean, he's built something incredible at Bravo that is unlike anything else. Um, but you're right. Maybe he will just, you know, take, you know, Radio Andy and continue to build his platform from there. It'd be interesting to see. But I mean, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. No, I, agree. I just think the optics on it. I don't think Bravo can afford that right now. Yeah. Like, is watch what happens making money is it look at you see if you really pay attention and notice like why are why aren't these guests in person like we still have lots of guests that are not in person right oh, Housewives. Yeah. i mean True. below deck i mean have we had any below deck is always on that screen they're not they're not you know i mean so the, the flying in and the hotels that's probably helped a little bit right Oh, mm. sure we're gonna have lisa rid on erica jane uh in of course person, absolutely but, you know, it's not, not everyone's in person these days. Not everyone. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. Think about, I mean, I can't remember. I, I have to catch up on Watch What Happens. But when is the last time a below deck person has been in person? Right. right. That's true. And that's, that's true. one of the highest rated shows on Bravo. It's not buzzworthy enough. Wow. That's crazy. Well, David, thank you so much for taking the time out of this, your weekend, this Sunday to chat with me. Um, you are just, I mean, as I've told you, you know, we've met in person, we've hung out. You are wonderful. You are so talented. I admire you as a person, but your career and everything you've done. So thank you for being so kind to take the time to chat with me. I appreciate it more than you know. Anytime I will come back anytime you want. And like, I just say to people like follow behind the velvet rope on Apple, Spotify, behind velvet rope anywhere like yes. podcasts are found there's no the in the ig by the way it's just behind velvet rope but anyway what you say? there's no what there's no the in the ig everyone always makes oh. 
it's too long for IG apparently to put a VA in it. But gotcha. Well, sorry. So it's behind velvet rope then? Behind velvet rope. There's no VA. Behind velvet rope. And, and I tell people there really is non-housewives. We do lots of non-housewives on the show. It's just we've, Me too. we've had Broadway people on. You have. You I have. have a Broadway producer coming up. That's exciting. Someone who has a very huge pop. This is a, such a hint. Someone has a very big pop culture slant. And when I say producer, I just mean that she has money and has invested in Broadway shows. But let me tell you, she invests in very successful Broadway shows. Moulin Rouge. Oh, I know who you, oh, I know exactly who you mean. Yes, I know exactly oh, who you mean. Me too. Listen, I'm like friends with Orfe. I got to get Orfe and Andy Carl on my Yes. Oh. It just hasn't, like, it's it's not even like I've tried, really. It's of just course. Kind of like, I've been so busy but I should have Orfe and Andy Carl on. Yes. Orfe could be, you know, Orfe. Someone told me Orfe has a whole thing with Christina Aguilera where they just don't like each other. That what? I, I, what? I don't know this. Someone in the Broadway world told me this, that like, apparently it's out there that like, she was not really supposed to be Christina, but they were on the same, something same and something happened. I'm just, I mean, also, you know, Orfe is, best friends with Chaz Bono, like since childhood. So, oh, no, right. So, right. So you, you, you scratch that Orfe. Orfe would be a good interview. We have, she would be. Cher, and, and she talks about Cher. She's, she's, wow. always, like, let's talk. She's oh, also gosh. really good friends with Kim D. That's how I know Orfe. Yes. Yeah, oh, like, so many yeah, connections. So Orfe, to... Orfe and Andy Carl, it just, I just haven't gotten around to like, that'd be a things. good interview to have. I mean, so many, she'll, she'll be on. Yeah, she, I did a, I did a, I hosted a masterclass with her through one of the hosting gigs that I do. I was a host for it. And uh, she is just in, she, listening to her mentor these kids, but also just talk about I me. Mean, she was just like, she has so much to say. It's incredible. Yeah, she's because they're just, you know, we yeah. have Broadway two people. You do, you do. You know? Well, and for those watching as well, if you want to keep up with me, you can follow me at Rye underscore Myers here on Instagram. Um, you can go to ridethenewsguy.com for more, which is uh, ridethenewsguy.com. You can go to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate to make a donation. And as always, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, below. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and I'm on TikTok at Rye underscore Myers. Uh, TikTok, not as much, but, you know, got to get on those social media platforms. So, well, David, thank you so much for your time. And uh, it was great to chat with you. So good chatting with you. I'll come back anytime. Thank you.